you still believe that God has prepared something for you. God has something for you. Please don't sabotage it. Please don't profit it. Because there is a reason, there's a purpose why we gather this morning. Amen. And I'm sorry to tell you it's not about you. I know you don't like that. <laughs> because if you, if you seek the kingdom of God first and His righteousness, then it will be yours. All these things shall be added unto you. Our family, our business, our job is just a byproduct of what we have done in the advancement of the kingdom of God. It's just a byproduct. I wonder how people still believe that if they neglect the kingdom, they don't participate in the kingdom agenda. They just live for themselves. They just like, you know, <laughs> they don't care about the church, what's, what's going on in the church. They don't want to involve in training. They don't want to involve in discipleship. They want to involve. And then they said, God bless me. Where do you get that? Where do you get that? It's, it just comes from religion right there. I think Jesus died not to start a religion. When Jesus died on the cross, he is raising up a new generation that loves God. There will be people, a new breed of people that is totally different from anybody. And it could be you. Because why? Because of what Jesus has done in your life. Jesus redeems you. He paid the penalty for your sin. He died for you. He shed his blood for you for one purpose, because of the redemptive plan of God. Yeah. Hallelujah. And when he redeems you, he takes you out from darkness to bring you into the light. Amen. From curses, he brought you to blessing. From blindness, he gives you revelation. From bondage, he gives you freedom. From brokenness, He gives you wholeness. And now, you do nothing for Him. That's religion right there. You only think about yourself. You think, you're always thinking about your family. And the kingdom agenda has nothing to do with you. You believe that. So every time your pastor talks about the vision, probably your leaders beginning to talk about our tri-city need to be saved. You don't, you don't care. Why? Because your mind is all about you. Yes. Me and my family, my wife and my children. What about the kingdom of God? That's why you read your Bible. One day they will tell you that I never knew you. Not anybody who said, Lord, 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 will enter into the kingdom of heaven. But Lord, but Lord, when was the last time I'm with you? I never knew you. Are you with me when I want those people to be saved? I never knew you. You never, you know, you are never with me. While I'm busy changing the world, you're just changing the diapers of your baby. While I'm saving people's lives, I die for them. You think about your house, your business. So let tell me, tell me, when was the last time I'm with you? Doing the vision to change the world. I have changed your world so that together we could change the world. But you just want to change your world and then you buy your own world. Religion destroy churches. All over the world, I've seen this. I've been to 32 countries preaching the gospel, training leaders and training pastors. The number one enemy of the gospel are the people with religious spirit. It never changed the city. It never changed the nation. And it never changed the family. Because until and until in faith, the future of the world become more important than your future you have no future. Because this is not about us. This is about changing the world for Jesus. That's how big is the vision. 
I pastor at the age of 25. And I, when I started to pastor, not one person believed that I, I am a pastor. I was so skinny during that time. My waistline is 27. Sexy, baby. 27. <laughs> and now the set 27 goes up here. <laughs> it grew big after 34 years. At the age of 25, God want me to preach the gospel among the young people. And I was so excited to preach the gospel in the campus. Because I come to know the Lord Jesus Christ inside the campus. I'm an architect by profession, by the way. So, I pastor at the age of 25. And most of my friends, most of our pastors told me, you are crazy. Don't start a church in the university belt area. Because you're going to suffer badly about it. I said, why? Because the student have no, they don't earn a living. They just <laughs> rely on their parents. And during that time, 1988 was a down economy for the Philippines. So the economy is down and the, the student are barely, you know, most of them are poor. But I begin to receive the calling of God. Now I have to make a choice. Do I believe on the voice of the people or I believe on the voice of God? So I decided to believe on God. Okay, Lord, I pastor church in the middle of the university belt area. In a matter of five years, all the prophecy of this pastor fulfilled. I suffer. <laughs> I almost quit because I can't even pay a $200 facilities during that time. I got debt. I got, I am in trouble. I, I tell you, I'm in trouble. But one thing steers me is the vision. I've seen what happened to the Philippines, the corruption. From the government to the lowest level are corrupt. And I see the result. I saw the result like it makes people poor out of this corruption. Wherever you go, there was a rampant corruption. And then I begin to ask the question, what happened? During my devotion and prayer, God spoke to my heart, Oriel. You see those corrupt officials right now? When they were young, they are being discipled by the devil. While they were in campus. I was shocked to hear that from God. And now after graduation, they've been so corrupt in the middle of their campus. When they come out, now they were called educated corrupt people. And no, you, nobody caught these corrupt people because they are highly educated. So we have educated corrupt people. I'm glad there's no one that in America, right? Wherever I go, most corrupt people are educated. They came from campus. So, while I received the vision, I began to understand why God called me. I said, Lord, are you sure? <laughs> You're going to preach to the young people. Thousands of them will be born again. You will train and equip them. And you're going to prepare an entire generation so that your nation will be changed. But the voice of people told me the negative. People told me that it can never happen. You're just a skinny guy. <laughs> you're poor and you are not known. And you're zero. I, I, I just, I think everything was confirmed. It really happened the way how they talk to me. You know what? It's so hard to be on that middle. The voice of God and the confirmation of the voice of people. But I insist to believe God. I don't know what's happening to me. Probably I'm crazy for Jesus. That's what they call me. This man is crazy for Jesus. I don't know what will happen to my life. I got married with no salary. I don't know how to feed my kids. I just trust the Lord. 
I just believe God. I've been a pastor for 33, 34 years now. Look at me, still alive, right? <laughs> And I'm going to the nation, bringing this message. It rings on my ear that God said, I will use you to preach the gospel to these young people. These young people will be discipled and they will be raised as leaders because Oriel, you're going to reinforce the future with leaders. Prepare the future because Satan has been preparing the future demonic leaders that will run your nation. You have to create another flow. That's how the vision come to me. So I begin to preach the gospel to young people. For the first 15 years, I was confused because it grows to 200 only. For the first 15 years, I've been doubting God. Lord, are you sure you want me to pastor? How come you told me I will be preaching to 1,000 people? Then I realized something. God told me this. Oriel, you have to learn to walk with me. I'm, I'm giving you what I'm supposed to give to you. That's the time, the 203, I realized I learned to disciple my people. I need, I need to come out with training process. The process that would produce more leaders like a pipeline of leadership. God said, produce a pipeline that produce leaders. Produce a pipeline that produce leaders. Those students that you win, God gave me an idea on 203. This is the first step, Oriel. Help that student to find their way back to God. That's the first step. After that, you teach the student how to start up their new life in Jesus. Third, he said, after that, you have to help the student, disciple them, to put their life back to order back to the original design of their life. And then you can empower them after you train them, after you disciple them, so that you could send and release them to the nations. How did it happen? Second Kings chapter 2. Let me read this passage. This is the process that God showed me. That's why I believe on the vision. In Second Kings chapter 19, can you give that verse? The people of the city said to Elisha, Look, our Lord, this town is well situated, as you can see, but the water is bad and the land is unproductive. God showed me this verse. When I saw that the land is unproductive, I see the nation of the Philippines. I see the barrenness. I saw the emptiness, the brokenness of people. They are poor, they are suffering. The land is unproductive. But God showed me, the people of the city said, look, our Lord, the town is well situated. It means that the nation of the Philippines is highly strategic. Do you know that Singapore, if you go to Singapore, they have no natural resources. But they are one of the most wealthiest city in, the, in Asia. Do you know that Hong Kong has no... Uh, what we call the minerals, natural resources. If you compare that to the Philippines, do you know that we have the gold deposit second largest in the world? Do you know that we have a, a great deposit of oil and fossil oil? We have a lot of, you know, ore, you know, a lot of minerals in our country. If you go up, if you look at the Philippines, up on the land are poor people that down below there are treasures. And they were corrupted by people. That's why the people are poor. I want to kill all those leaders. If I could. But you don't do it that way. I see these leaders. I said, how come this nation becomes so corrupt like that? And then God showed me. And he showed me something, as you can see, but the water is bad. What is water? Water has the ability to flow. It has the ability to flow. And every time this water flow, it makes the land unproductive. So
So I began to meditate upon this verse and God showed me what are the things that flows in the land that makes it unproductive. Then I see it. Oh my God. I saw the campus. When the student graduated, they begin to come out from the campus. They begin to flow and go to different places and they corrupt everything. And I said, God, I saw it, Lord. I got to go back to the campus. I got to bring the gospel to the campus because if the student will come to know, they will blow and make the land productive again. That's the vision. I saw it in the vision. And it's starting that day, I cry out to God, Lord, help me. I don't know what to do. That's the time I saw and understand how to process the people to prepare leadership. Immediately, God showed me how to create leadership pipeline. In 2003, I saw the vision. I heard how to do it. I walked with God. In the first three years of my ministry, it grew, it grew to 3,500. In the next five years, it, it becomes 5,000. It becomes 10,000. It becomes 15,000. It becomes 20,000. I begin to share this vision to most pastors because God showed me, Oriel, you cannot do it on your own. You're going to die. You have to impart this to other vision, to other pastors. And when I impart this to many pastors, they believe this. Now we have Campus Revolution Conference every year with like 25,000 young people coming to that meeting. We begin to do that. Look at next verse. Verse 20. Bring me a bowl. Bring me a new bowl, he said, and put salt in it. So they brought it to him. Then he went up to the spring, threw the salt into it, saying, this is what the Lord says, I have healed this water. Never again will it cause death or make the land unproductive. God show me, I want to bring healing to every campus. I want to restore the student back to life. You have to preach the gospel to these young people. Yes, yes. If you go to my church, it's 80% young people. But when I visit different churches, 80% old people. <laughs> Where are the young people? If you fail to get your young people, you're not prepared for the future. Yes. The church will die eventually. Yes. We have to reinforce our future with great leaders while they were young. Hallelujah. Bring me a new bowl and put salt on it. So God show me there's a bowl and put salt on it and go to the source of water, the spring, and bring that salt. The spring shows me this is the campus, the one who flows, who gives the flow. But if you put the salt in the spring, it means you put Christians in the campus then the campus will come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. Then we begin to see this. If we could change the campus, we can change a nation. If we could win the young people today, we could win the world tomorrow. And I begin to believe that. So I go back to the campus. I said, God, how can I bring the bowl of salt? He said, you start from one. Become the soul of the earth. Let that person know how to disciple someone until they disciple, until they saturate the campus with the gospel of Christ. God showed me three things. He said, teach your people to become fluent in the gospel. Create a community inside the campus. Then let every cell, every campus community carry the gospel cause. Preach the gospel, create community, small group, train them because they have a cost to fulfill. I begin to go to the campus. Today we have like 42 campuses bringing the bowl of salt inside the campus. And every time we bring the salt inside the campus, the student got healed. I got one disciple named Greco Belica become a cabinet members of the president. Do you know what is the position? Anti-corrupt Caesar. 
is my disciple. God show me, if you disciple, you're gonna change the nations. It's so powerful that every word that God spoken happens. It transforms a nation. Today, until now, we're still doing it because we still not yet finished the task. It's unfinished task. We still disciple people, we still raise up leaders, and we still produce leaders from different aspects of society. And that's how to change and transform a city. We prioritize the message of salvation. Every day, I told my staff, Pastor Blood, if you're a church staff, don't follow the other churches with church staff. Because most of the church staff, they stop evangelizing. Because they stop. If you're a church staff, you don't stop evangelizing. You need to disciple. I train my people not to become people, you not to become program oriented. You must become people oriented. You don't go to church for the program, you go to church for people. Amen. I literally changed the atmosphere of my church. I begin to talk to my my musicians. Do you have do you have so you have, do you have disciples? No pastor. Do you lead cell? No. I'll give you six months. In six months, if you don't have disciple and you are not leading cells, you're out of the ministry. The only person that will go to the stage are the people who carry the vision in their hearts. I begin to, I begin to set a standard. Come on, set the word standard. You don't do ministry if you don't have people ministry. I repeat that. You don't have ministry if you don't have people ministry. Because Jesus never died on that cross for the church program. He died for the people. He never said on the cross, Lord, forgive me for they don't know how to make program. No, forgive them because they don't know what they are doing. It's about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So I begin to talk to my musicians. I even do this, Pastor Blood, one day. During Sunday service, I said, Is there a first timer here? None. Is there someone come to know the Lord Jesus Christ this week? None. Then I talk to my worship team, You better get down. This time, there's no singing, no dancing. Just repenting. Because in the Bible, if you save one soul, the whole angel in heaven is rejoicing. How can you rejoice without somebody God say? So the next Sunday, I ask my worship team, do you think we could worship, play music, or we just repent again? The drummer said, just to make sure, Pastor, I brought two persons with me now. <laughs> first time we got 46 first timer goes to church on that Sunday and I said let's worship the Lord we rejoice because people are coming to know the Lord because that's the vision saving lives saving people hallelujah we must have the right reason why we go to church we go to church because we rejoice with Jesus. Why the angels are rejoicing? Because they were so caught up by the joy of Jesus. Because if you want to make Jesus happy, <laughs> bring souls to Him. He was not enjoying your singing if people are not saved. <laughs> There's no verse in the Bible, go and sing to all nations. There's no verse like that. Go and dance to all the world. No. There's no verse like that. Go and make disciples. That's the Bible verse. And I believe this is our responsibility. Every one of us, this must be our vision. Because this is not about your family. This is about taking over the land. We need to take over. The tri-city, God's people should take it over. 
We need to bring the gospel to the tri-city. Amen. In every place, we have to bring the gospel. We don't need to push you. We don't need to prod you. You just need to obey. Can I bring amen? We will not force you. Because God said, one day I will know you. Because one day you will regret when you face Jesus, Jesus will tell you, I never knew you. Why? When was the last time you spent time with me to win people? You never spent time with me. That's why I don't knew you. Because the only person I know is the one who have the heart like my heart. I want no one will perish. I want every soul that will come to repentance. No one should perish. That's the heart of Jesus. Is that your heart? No, your heart is, I want a new house. I want a new car. I want a good vacation. <laughs> And God said, what about my purpose? What about my plan to save people's lives? That's the issue right there. And God said, if you want the land to become productive again, I want you to do this, Oriel. Bring the salt in the spring. So I begin to bring the gospel to the spring, the campus, because that's where the leaders were born for the nation. If I was able to bring the gospel to the student, begin to train them and equip them, begin to disciple them, they will take leadership in the future. Literally, thousands of cells is being born in so many campus. Before pandemic, we have like 13 services a week because we have a lot of services for young people. And then the COVID attack. And then we have to slow down. But now I can say, we're back full blast. <laughs> Amen. We need to do something right now so that the land will never become unproductive again. Because when you come to know the Lord Jesus Christ, your original design is to become a great representative of the kingdom. That's your original design. Remember, when you listen to the gospel, the gospel don't just redeem you from the power of sin and death. You are saved not just to be saved. You are saved to be renewed in the way you think. That's why Jesus' first message is repent for the kingdom of God has now arrived. The word repent means change the way you think. Because the way you think has been contaminated by wrong information. Because religion tells you, take care of your family. No, your family will be taking care of the kingdom. I'm not saying don't go to your job. That's not my point. But my point, God will take care if you take the kingdom of God first as your agenda. Hallelujah. The word repentance is change the way you think. How do you change our mind the way we think? That word means you go back to the original design, the way you were created. How did Adam and Eve think during the time when they were created? You know the way how they run their thinking? Listen to this. There is no parents. Adam and Eve have no mama and papa. So no parents giving them information. They have no pastor, evangelist, prophet. They have none. The only information they receive is from God. And God said, I want you to repent. Change the way you think. The way Adam and Dave think. That the only source of their information is none other than God. That's the only information. Because in that time, the only person they trust is God. Go back to that point. No need to trust anybody, not even your job, not even your business. You trust God. That's the original design for your life. Now if you can begin to trust God, 
you can now do to God's agenda. I can still remember when I was young, I began to preach the gospel to many students and I impart the vision to them. Today, the, el, the, <laughs> the oldest person in my church is me. <laughs> if you go to my church and then I begin to tell them, hey, win your parents. They begin to win their parents. I said, thank you, Jesus. Now I'm not the oldest now. There are now parents coming to my church. <laughs> Because automatically, when you become a Christian and you got agenda, you cannot help yourself but to share the gospel to your parents. Can I ask this question? How is your children? How would they flow one day? Would they flow under drugs? Frustrations, broken life? You know what's happening in America? Divorce, abortion, drug addictions, mental problem, suicide, name it. Everything is here. They need to hear the original information. They need the truth. Truth means original information coming from the right source. And when they hear the right information coming from the right source, you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. We bring the truth to, the God, to, to our nations. So I begin to train, I begin to train my 12 disciples. I talked to my wife and I said, we got to select 12 people under our care. So my wife selected 12 disciples. I selected my 12 disciples. My disciples are not even married. Those are singles during the time. So I began to disciple my 12. I said, all of you will go to the process of training. You need to love training. Then I got the word, training is my happy hour. <laughs> we coined that word so that everybody should begin to speak the same word. Training is my happy hour. So what do you have right now? Training is my happy hour. So we begin to train our leaders. And then I begin to tell them, once you finish the process, you have to disciple your own 12. So they begin to disciple the 12. I realize from 12, it becomes 144. It becomes 288. And then their 144 begin to do the same process. Now they got 1728. 1728. It becomes 3000. And then after that 3000, the 3,000 begin to disciple 12 again. It becomes 20,000. 20, the same process, the same materials, the same system, we duplicate our strategy. And then one day, God want me to share this to other churches. So other churches begin to learn the process, learn the system, and we disciple people, it multiply. Now we have more than 7,000 doing the same thing. Are you listening? Yeah. We can gather like, we, we have to baptize one day like 3,000 people in one day. We begin because the 7,000 churches believe on this process, on these visions, the campus. Now we gather 365,000 in one day. In a big park. No one was able to do that. But God made it happen. And that day I was preaching on the 365 and God told me this, I told you. I told you. I was crying that day because God never lies. God loved the city. He loved to transform my nations. While I was preaching on the 300,000 people, I know God is up to something. He prepared these things for us. How many among you, you are saying something will happen on Hungry Gen? Do you know that this church can be a launching pad for visions? Do you know that? Hallelujah. Do you see this? Do you see this? Heaven will be open. Kingdom will be moving. Because this church will be used by God powerfully. So I want you to get ready. Amen. I want you to get ready. Regardless of your age. Age doesn't matter. I got, one, I got 
we got some somebody, uh, an old woman, the age of 80, got 12 disciples. 84 years old. We've seen this from different churches. I got one church in California by the name of Pastor Pong. His name is, her name is uh, Sister Prime. She was at the prime of her age. She was 80, 86. And she is building her one for four disciples. You've got to hear that because you've never seen that before, isn't it? So therefore, because you never see that, you don't believe it. So you think like, I'm not that kind of person. No. You just sabotage the plan of God for your life. You might have just forfeited the great plan of God. You are designed to become fruitful. You are designed to become productive. In fact, you are created by God to multiply, not just to produce. You can conquer your dream and you can lead as a leader. That is your original design. So most, most of these poor students, when I talk to them, they don't believe. Because you know what? Most Filipino people are oppressed. For 400 years, we are colonized, we are captured by the Spanish people. We've been a slave for these Spanish people. For 400 years, we don't know how to lead. We just know how to follow. And then the American came. Not you. <laughs> the old, old American. They eventually colonized again our country. Now we have another boss. Used to be our boss are the Spanish-speaking people. It became the English-speaking people. And then the Japanese keep on oppressing us. Until we are set free, we become a nation again. But the spirit remained in the mind of every Filipino student. They were oppressed. Do you know that Philippines are the number one sending of overseas contract workers? We are known for household nanny, the Filipinos. I was sad for that because I know God has something for the Filipino. I begin to speak against that oppression. Now the Filipino, when they hear the message of Jesus, he said, he has anointed me to set the captives free. I preach the gospel to every Filipino and teach them oppression can only be can only be destroyed by the power of the blood of Jesus. Do you know not every person in the church is free? Most of us are oppressed. How do I know that you, you are oppressed? Number one, you don't dream for your nation. Number two, you lack discipline to do that. Number three, you have no plan to change your nation. And number four, no dream, no discipline, no plan, no right action to participate on that. If you are oppressed, you are so full of fear. You want your job, secure your job, secure your finances until you become so much of yourself. You don't plan about the plan of the kingdom. So I begin to preach to these young people. Hey brother, I told these young people, Jesus will heal your oppression. Begin to dream. Dream big thing for your life and for your family. But you have to discipline yourself. Stop those computer games. Dream and plan for your future. So as a church, we dream together. We plan together. We discipline ourselves together. And we start doing the right thing. We put the salt in every campus. And the Bible said, I love this. Look at this verse. When I begin to read this passage, I was so elated and blessed. He said, this is what the Lord says. I have healed this water. Never again will it cause death or make the land unproductive. The water has remained pure to this day according to the word Elisha had spoken. When God healed the campus, He will heal the land. This church must go back 
to minister to the young people. If you want America to recover back their heritage and their destiny, let's go back to these young people. Let's bring your children must be here. Your children must come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. Your children, your grandchildren, you must be the person who received the revelation, the vision, and you begin to be like water that has been purified by God. Your life will flow to your grandchildren, to your children, and you bring the flow. And wherever you go, the land become productive again. That's your calling. Every one of us from this church, we receive the powerful word. Our life is changed. Our life is transformed. Our life was empowered because we're going to flow. When we go to our offices, we flow. Amen. When we go back to our campus, we flow. Wherever we go, we flow. We bring the power of the gospel to our city. And the city will be changed and transformed because the church is back full blast. Bringing the gospel to change the nation and change the world. Amen. I find myself, I thought I will just be preaching on the campus. Then one day I begin to preach all over the nations. And then God brought me out to Asia. I begin to preach in Hong Kong, in China, in Korea, in Taiwan, in Thailand. And then God brought me to America. I, I was able to even go to Ukraine, to Moscow. I've been to Latin America. I've been to Australia. 32 country. I used to think like I've been preaching the gospel, but God said, no, 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 Riel. Your vision is too small. You preach the gospel in Jerusalem, there in Judea, then Samaria, until you reach the uttermost part of the world. Now I'm in Washington. <laughs> preaching the the gospel, the good news. I believe your life matters. <laughs> Not just black. Your life matters. Amen? Your life matters. You can be a great minister of the gospel of Christ. How many of you have to bring the gospel to the nations? Listen, if we could change the young people today, we could change the world tomorrow. If we could transform the life of these people, we could transform our city. One day you will declare the Tri-City is the city of our God. Yeah. Amen. Nobody dare to say that. But you have to start declaring Tri-City is the city of our God. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We will begin to preach and let the people encounter God. Let me close by telling you this is your time. Not to sabotage the future of the city. Not to forfeit what God has prepared for you. But starting today, let's believe the vision. The vision will transform our city. Not just my family, not just my life, but God will transform our city, our family, and our life. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed this content and this was a blessing to you, would you help us and hit thumbs up so that it could help more people to discover this video. It costs you nothing, but it can go a long way to help with the algorithm. As well as if you're not subscribed to our channel, hit subscribe, click on the bell so that you can be reminded each time that we upload videos. Thank you so much for being a part of this community. If you're interested in learning more about HungryGen, our internship, our conferences, deliverance, and so many other things, go to HungryGen.com for more information. And as always, remember, better is not good enough, the best is yet to come.